Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on this chilly, wintry day here. It's, it's really cold, I'm all bundled up, so, but I'm excited to be drawing for you today, doing this kind of uh, different kind of demo, a little bit different thing. I'm gonna just um, share a couple things with you before I get started, just to make sure everybody is here that wants to be here, so we'll wait a couple minutes, and I'll also be talking about my newest workshop, which I'm really happy to have finally out there after a couple of years of development. So talk about the drawing workshop. So I, I always love to share what's on my um, in my stack of books, so I'll go ahead and do that. If you were watching yesterday, if you're um, uh, uh, pastel painting monthly, uh, pastel painting lessons online, I always get those words mixed up. If you're a member of the member subscription, I'm sorry if this is a repeat of that, but um, just bear with me and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, get right to drawing. So I love to have books that have to do with art, even if they're not exactly art books. These are, these are kind of um, historical fiction, a couple of these. But it keeps me kind of in, involved in art and in the stream, thinking about it, um, gives me ideas for research. So first is uh, Girl in Hyacinth Blue by Susan Freeland. She's kind of a little bit light reading. I like it. Um, you want it up here? Yeah, sure. Hold on. Up there. here? Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, so th this, is a, this is a really nice book um, about Vermeer. And then this one I just got from my mom, The Stolen Lady. It's a um, focus on the Mona Lisa. So uh, I just threw a mm, couple chapters, and it's, it's really a nice read. Just really relaxing. Sit by the fire, read, read about art. It's a great one. And then this one, this is um, The Lady in Gold. It, there's a motion picture about this, um, The Woman in Gold. So this is a very interesting story. Not so light reading, but it's, it's really um, worth the time. Love this about Gustav Klimt's um, painting. And then this one is Rescuing Da Vinci. And this is uh, about uh, paintings that were stolen in the war and how they were um, returned and uh, got back to hopefully, well, some of them got to back to their rightful places. Um, and also a movie on this um, called The Monuments Men, which is a really entertaining movie, very interesting movie. Um, George Clooney's in it and some other really great actors. So um, this is a really wonderful book and I've, I'm really enjoying kind of this. This is one to just kind of thumb through and 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 enjoy um, the the history behind these amazing works of art. Okay, so that is that. That's what's what my 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 dear mom has made sure I have all these good good things on my on my in my stack. So um, on to on to drawing, I. I'm so happy to finally have the drawing workshop available to you guys. I've been working on it for just about two years. Uh, I feel like drawing encompasses everything that we're doing as, as artists, as visual artists. Um, whether you're an abstract painter, whether you are a landscape painter, um, do figures, drawing is still the foundation of everything that we do. And I really saw this in great focus when I am studying other artists, such as um, artists like Monet. I didn't know that Monet was an amazing caricature artist, um, cartoonist in early in his career, uh, but an amazing draftsman. And that's something you know I, I wasn't aware of. Same thing with uh, artists like Edgar Payne just really fine draftsmen. So no matter what kind of art you do, drawing is that, that foundation of it. So I have been wanting to put together a drawing workshop for, well, so, a really long time. And I've been you know, actively working on it for a couple of years. It's such a, um, uh, there's so much to it. And I had to figure out how I was gonna present 
all of that in a really cohesive way for you. And I wanted also, it was really important to me to bring together the things that I felt like I was missing that I didn't get until later in my career. And there's a lot there. Um, when I went to art school, there was a lot of focus on, on concept. So that, um, so I, I, I feel like that was um, at the cost of drawing, at least a bit. Though I, you know, I had a lot of drawing, head drawing and head painting and, and life drawing. Still, I feel like there were gaps in my understanding about drawing that I had to learn on the job. So I wanted to make sure that whatever I did in a drawing workshop filled in those gaps. And I'm, I, I feel like I've accomplished that in the workshop. And it, I really take you through from the very beginning how to hold your pencil to warming up to um, how to how to do light, light and shadow, how to think about applying the form principle to everything in, in the visual field. And then I take you through construction methods. And I think that this is one area that I really didn't have a great understanding of from early on. So construction methods, I take you right through contour and cross contour, the scribble method, the spiral method, and then tracing, and that's something um, that, that people think about tracing, putting, putting down a, a, a sketch and then putting a piece of tracing paper over it and redoing it, restating it, and doing that o over and over again, layer after layer, until your drawing is, is what you want it to be. Now, some people think, oh, well, that's cheating. Well, guess what? There really isn't any cheating in drawing and painting. There's copying other people's stuff and passing it off as your own, I think that that's about the only cheating that there, there really is. Then um, working on, in a tonal way, grid thinking and measuring, and then there's the planar analysis of form. So I take you through all those methods. We can use all those methods, we can combine them. Some subjects lend themselves to one or more method more than another. And I talk about that in the workshop. So then after that, after you've got that construction method, how, how to think about it, I take you through rendering methods. And so whether you do a simple outline, whether you do a sketchy outline, whether you do an accented outline, and then blending and using tone, using toned paper. So I take you through a bunch of exercises on all those things, also on how to see shape, not things, because it's a lot easier to draw shapes than it is to draw things. <laughs> so that's just like this, making this mental shift. So I take you through exercise of all that stuff, and then finally we do some nice projects that incorporate all of those exercises, all of that thinking. And so we do some really um, fun uh, projects, but the workshop isn't just those flashy projects. It's a lot more than that. It's, it's all of that, all those, all those methods of, of thinking and seeing and constructing a drawing, which I think is, really, really important. But we did get to, we did get to do some really fun uh, projects as well. So there's, a, there's a, some landscape. Notes. And we did, so did this really pretty um, Australian Shepherd, Cooper. Is that, is that lined up, you guys? Yeah, maybe a little. Okay. There we go. All right, good, good. And then we do a final project that really incorporates a, um, a lot of elements of the still life and lots of blending and rendering techniques. Now, my workshop is called Drawing and Sketching. And I think that that's an important distinction. So I love to just sketch, just sit down and, and sketch. It's such a relaxing and wonderful thing. And it's also a really wonderful way to um, understand details that you might be wanting to use in a painting, 
to do a journal, to just, re, you know, just a, a, like a diary. But so what's the difference between drawing and sketching? To me, it's about your intention. So uh, to me, a sketch can be more finished, but it also can be just a, a, a loose kind of gestural thing. A drawing to me is some referring to a more finished piece of art, more polished, with the intent that the drawing is, is the final thing. So, you know, we make that, those kinds of distinctions. So we, we do both drawing and sketching in this workshop. So let me give you what I think might be a good example. So here we have, um, let's see, I'll move this stuff out of the way so it's not confusing. So here's a kind of a good example. So here we have this garlic. I consider this a drawing. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I consider this a drawing, while I consider this one a sketch. Same here. So here is a drawing of this little little metal box that I have, and here is more of a sketch version. So a little looser, just um, just a kind of a different intent. So these guys, this little 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 teddy bear thing. It's a drawing, in my mind. In my mind, it's a drawing. And same here. In my mind, this, this is a, a, a friend of mine <laughs> from a long ago. Uh, it's a drawing. So today, we're going to do a drawing, I think. I think I would consider what we're going to do today a drawing. And before I get going on that, let me just give you some details on, on the workshop. It's I, it's uh, about 15 hours of video, which is a lot for one of my workshops. That was pretty crazy. When, when we know. started adding it up, I know. We, were we like, started oh, adding yeah. like, whoa. We were really getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we, yeah, we just we went, we went all out. So because you're gonna, you get to see every every mark that I make on these, you know, pretty intense projects. There's 81 pages of, of study guide, the PDF. So there's a lot to it. Uh, but we wanted to make it available to everyone at a really good price, um, really affordable, because I think it's so important. And again, that foundation of everything that we're doing across all media, no matter what media you're engaged in, what, no matter what media you love. I hope you love more than one. I certainly do. But uh, the drawing workshop, it's a really affordable price right now. It's uh, Right now it's $37 off, so it's $72 right now. And that's for the that sale lasts 23 more days. It ends on January 23rd. Uh, and if you're a monthly member, member subscriber, you get your additional $15 off, and that comes automatically when you check out. So don't worry about it. It'll, it'll come right off um, uh, the extra $15. So that means you monthly members, it's only $57. And the other thing to keep in mind about this workshop, the materials costs are pretty modest compared to a lot of the other workshops where it's it's the investment in the workshop plus a, you know, a substantial investment in materials. Whereas this one, it's a lot more modest just overall. So I think it's a really, really good value and will serve you really well, whether you're a beginner or whether you're a really experienced artist. I hear from artists all the time, painters all the time that, oh, I'm a little intimidated by drawing. I kind of skipped over it. <laughs> How many times have I heard that? And I see it on the Facebook groups too. And I don't, what that does is it kind of creates a, an Achilles heel for you. So you may find yourself limited to what you're willing to tackle as a painter. Maybe structures feel like, oh, I can't do that, or people, or even a vehicle in, in, a, in the landscape. You know, you kind of shy away from things. Or maybe your, your paintings have a little bit of a naive, kind of amateurish feel sometimes because you're not able to, to nail that drawing the way you want to. Well, this workshop is going to help you do that. 
So um, I, 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 I think it's a good one, and I highly recommend that you get it. <laughs> All right, so let's get some drawing done today. Um, and this one is, you know, some, some rendering. And I did go ahead and I, I practiced. I usually don't do that, but I did practice. So I've already done this guy. Um, this is a little, this little silver picture. The, the photograph actually, it almost looks like it's, uh, it's bronze or something because, or brass because it's so tarnished, but it is silver. And I noticed in my, in my drawing that I did in practice that it's not as, it should be a little squatter, I think. So I'm going to try to make that adjustment to it. Other than that, I like the way the rendering turned out, but I think that the, the actual um, dr drawing, which I did totally freehand, and I'm going to do it again today freehand, um, is off just a little bit, just a teeny bit. So I'm going to try to um, see if I can't get it a little bit more accurate to the actual picture. So I'm using this toned uh, paper. It's gray, toned gray. It's just, just Strathmore paper, nothing super fancy, just out of this pad. Um, and I'm going to be using a series of just graphite pencils. So um, from, I'll probably start with a, a with an HB and move up to probably something like a 6B eventually for the for the, the very dark uh, spots. And in addition to that, I'm going to be using uh, General's charcoal white for those highlights and some of the the light areas of the little picture. So that's about it. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to use a regular pencil sharpener. I don't, I don't really like to use the, an electric sharpener. I think the, this gets a nice sharp point. And I, I prefer this to electric or a hand crank sharpener. Let's see, what else am I going to be using? Um, I've got a kneaded eraser. What's up? Oh, no, we'll just try to stay right around here. Okay. But, um, you get it okay. off the camera, okay. uh, off the okay. shot. Okay, I see. Okay. And I've got a pink pearl eraser. Um, I've also got a little wedge of a pink pearl eraser, which can come in handy if you want to uh, remove a, a really little small section. And then what else have I got? I've got a couple stumps here, which I'll probably use for blending. Um, let's see. I've, I think I've got a nice clean one here, and I'll use that. And let's see if there's anything else. That's about it. Oh, I have a couple pieces of tracing paper, and I'll use those. I try not to block the, the sketch too much, but I'll use that to put under my hand so that I don't smudge the drawing as I go along. And that is about it. Oh, I'm going to start my sketch with a mechanical pencil. This is just an inexpensive Bic. And I like the feel of this for the initial construction of my drawing. But what's interesting about those construction methods, and I, I, I see this, again, people think, oh, well, that's, you know, doing that kind of thing, it's cheating. Well, it's not. And almost every artist does it, but we don't get to see that construction method because it's, it usually is erased or, or, um, uh, covered over by whatever rendering method is used. So it, there, it's usually there in one form or another, but we don't get to see it. So we, so I think a lot of people that aren't artists or aren't familiar with drawing methods think that it's that a drawing just sort of happens by magic. <laughs> but no, they don't. They don't happen by magic. They happen by um, seen in a particular way and. A construction method. So we're going to start this guy. So the, the the main challenge, as I said in the description of the of the video today, is this ellipse. And uh, I have the object. I'm working right now from a from a photograph, the same one that that is up on the screen. I've got it on my iPad, 
But I do have my little object here, and the main, I like having, you know, it's helpful to have the object so you can really turn it and, and see how, the, for instance, the handle is attached to it. So you can really, you know, understand how the object is um, constructed and put together of it in and of itself. Okay, so now I'm going to mark off how big I want this ellipse, and I'm looking at this guy, and I made it, I'm going to try to make it about the same size, so I'll just measure that off about like that. Okay, so that's, that's where I want my ellipse to be, and I'm just going to come along, and the thing with an ellipse, I'm eyeballing this ellipse today, um, and it, uh, eyeballing ellipses just takes practice. That's all it is, it's just a lot of practice. Ellipses are, are all over the place. <laughs> they, they uh, in still life, in cars, just all over. You go to a coffee shop, and those little creamer things are just ellipses everywhere, everywhere. So just coming along and eyeballing it, feeling it out. And you see I'm stating that, that ellipse over and over again, just feeling it. I want to get it. I think that that's pretty good right there. And I want the, the I don't want I don't want pointy edges, so I don't I don't want this, you know, this these points. I don't want points. I want it rounded edges. So I think I've got it pretty good. It's a it's a really oblique ellipse in the photo, so that's pretty good. So now, the other thing that I wanted to change in my drawing so I'm going to come along, and I'm going to bisect my this guy. And again, I'm I all of this is I'm eyeballing today, and that's totally legitimate. So I'm coming down. So um, I see some questions here, but mm -hmm. I'm going to let you do your initial drawing. Yeah. Before I start to distract you. Okay. Um, but I see them all, and um, it's going to be a good discussion, I think. Okay. Good. Okay, so now, in this sketch, I made this too long, this, this length. I wanted a little squatter, so I'm going to measure it, and it's about like so. So I want to come up a little bit from that. I wanted a little squatter, more like, more like that. So from there, I can see why I, I made that mistake when I did the drawing because it feels like it wants to be a little deeper, but it's not. And I, I want to just feel that think, I'm thinking through, so a little bit of that spiral method of construction to, to, to get this shape right. So I'm thinking through. And that's, I think that's pretty close. Maybe a little wider out here. And then this little um, piece for the pitcher comes off of this. And it's got a width. I think that's pretty good. And it's got a, a, a lip right there, and then it comes, and it's kind of divided here. So that's not bad. All right, and then this, the bottom of this has a, a little piece that, helps it attach to the little kind of stand that and I'm looking at it and I want to think about what's that negative shape that's created 
And I'm looking at what did I do the last time? Because if you've done something and you've learned some lesson from it, I always want to put it where I can see it. And I want to make sure that this distance and this distance and this distance, distance are even. I think that they are. And also this baseline, because it's, it's right in front front of me. So I'm you know, just going back. So I'm using several different methods to put this together. I'm measuring, I'm using spiral. So even in this one simple object, there's several thought processes going on. I can see a little tiny bit of that. And I think that that reads pretty well. I've got this off just a little bit, so I'll... Now erasing, I always want to be careful about erasing because I don't want to damage the, the surface of the paper. Okay, so now we've got all that. That looks pretty good. And I'm, I just want to mention as well that I'm pressing a little bit harder than I normally would. I would usually try to do a lighter construction line than I am here today because and I'm doing that for you guys so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. If I use too, too light a line, you guys have a hard time seeing it on camera. So that's the reason for that. And I want to just get this little design kind of going. It comes like so. And I'm looking at it here. Just kind of get that. That's nice. All right. All right, so now the handle. So measuring again, so the, how, high do, how high does that handle come up above the ellipse? Not much. It looks like it does more, but it really doesn't come up any higher. Than, than that, that little, that little top part of that. So that's good information. So then from there I can, I can judge a little bit. And I want to think about what is this negative shape? What is this shape doing? And where, how does it attach here? And how far down does it attach? About like that. And so I want to feel this. So I'm using a kind of sketchy, sketchy line because this is a, this kind of organic rounded shape and I kind of want to feel it. So to me, that's the, the way to feel it is to just get a little looser. And then I'm going to come and feel the bottom of that. And so now I've got a lot of lines here, and I need to kind of pick one. I need this, where is it? And I think I've got it, you know, I've definitely got it too thick. So let's kind of go ahead with the kneaded eraser, because I've got a lot of stuff here, and I don't, again, don't want to damage the surface of the paper. I think I need to come out a little bit more. And it's funny that this ends up being kind of the trickiest part of the drawing. And it did for me on the, on the original one I did as well. It 
it doesn't kind of seem like it would be. But just getting that kind of gesture of this. And it's got this nice thick and thin to it. So, you know, I kind of want to capture that. Oh, so now is the, this comes in handy because I want to make sure I don't ruin what I've already worked on. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. So really, I went through, I, I measured a little bit, I did some um, spirals, I thought through. I'm going to get this. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to draw um, where this cast shadow is going to be. And again, I'm going to think through because I, I want to make sure that makes sense. Like right, right here, I want to make sure that cast shadow is continuing, following through. There's this little neat kind of negative shape. How There's a little spot right there that I can see a little bit of the cast shadow behind the handle. So I want to make sure I get that. And then there's this kind of triangle shape created by the handle and this little negative shape right in there. So it's about like that. And I've exaggerated that little bump in there and I, I don't think that's necessary, so more like that. Okay. We have questions? Okay. So All right. Discussion. So okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So we have the questions that came in. The oh. most interesting one is, uh, how do you feel about projectors? Oh, well, that's because it's most interesting to you. <laughs> it is. It is really interesting to me. <laughs> um, you know what I think about, um, so when I was in art school, I used a lucigraph a lot. Um, I don't, I don't think there's any cheating. And so using a projector is fine. However, and it's a big however, um, I think that you still need to know how to draw, <laughs> even if you're using a projector, even if you're like doing a direct tracing. Because I've seen so many drawings that, that aren't accurate because a, a photograph is not going to give you, do, often doesn't give you enough information. That's why I have this object in front of me because the photograph may, may have a gap and I might not be able to see everything I need to see. And so we, we need to understand figure ground, we need, need to understand construction. Um, there's a lot, lot of understanding that we can, we can miss. And honestly, I used to miss um, when, when, you know, back in the day when I was using projectors. So um, that's what I think about it. So yeah, use it, but augment it with a, a really strong foundation in drawing and, and understanding about form. All right. And, um, Okay. So you feel you would feel the same way about tracing? I, yeah, it's tracing's the same, and, and, yeah. and tracing is a good method. So, but but what we used to do in art school is we would draw just like I did freehand. Let's say I've got my my drawing, I've got this much done. Let's say there was something that's not quite right about this drawing that I you know, and and there probably is thing are things that are not quite right about this drawing. But let's just say I wanted to get it, refine it even more and more and more. I would, th this is what we did back in the day. We would come along and we would redraw it. 
and we would we would come and then we'd get it to here and then we come along and we put another piece of tracing paper over that and we do it again until we finally got it just so and um, you know that to me is a great way to think about tracing more than like tracing tracing um, like a photograph but if you're going to trace, go through this process. If you're going to do direct tracing from a photograph, go through this process too. But make sure that you're really seeing everything so that you can get it accurate. Because often a photograph is not. Okay, so let's let's play with some rendering now. And can um, you, um, going back to another earlier question, yeah. can you just quickly define rendering? So rendering to me is taking a sketch or a drawing to a more finished, polished state. So that's what I mean by rendering. And so when you see stuff, um, a lot of stuff on the internet that's like really highly, highly like like today we're 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 making something. We want we want to take this outlined sketch and make it look like a shiny, shiny object. So that's so now I've got I've got a four B here. And I'm going to take it now. One thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to make sure that the little spots that I want, where I want highlights, that I don't put too much graphite down on them because I'm going to want to get that um, charcoal over the tops of, the, of those over the top of those spots. So, so I might want to come along and say, okay, I'm going to want this. I'm going to want a highlight right here, and I'm going to want one right here. I'm going to want one here and here. Um, right down the center there. A little bit on the edges of these guys. There's one right here. So I just want to make sure I can get that, that charcoal over the top of the graphite. Because the graphite gets a little, it's, you know, it's that shininess, that hardness. Um, and so sometimes it's hard to get the, the, the charcoal over the top of that. So I want to avoid that issue right off the bat. So I'm going to come in and get an initial kind of value down for my um, the inside here. It's pretty dark in here. Bouncing back to what we were talking about earlier, um, we cover some of that tracing techniques in the workshop. Oh yeah, we talk. I talk about all the the construction methods we do. Yeah. Oops, there's a little. And it's interesting, you know, because I have a friend. I think I I won't mention his name, but I showed I've shown you his paintings before, and he's really really great at rendering and really really great at detail. Uh -huh. and, and shadows and shading and everything, right. but he really can't draw. draw very well. <laughs> so every time I see his paintings, I'm like, oh, dude, please just use a projector or trace it because right. hit, the nose is off, the eyes yeah. are off, everything's kind of screwy, but it looks real, but it doesn't look real. Because it doesn't look real. There's something off. See, that's, that's to me, that's the problem with a lot of that, that, highly rendered stuff um, is that it's, uh, I'm going to use the uh, kind of negative um, term, it's kind of like lipstick on a pig. If you don't really have that foundation, it's not ever going to look just right unless you've got that foundation. So in this case, I'm going to be using the, the um, value of the paper as um, part of the drawing, which is kind of, you know, one, it, it's a, to me, it's one, one way of kind of making your job a little easier is by um, using a toned paper a little easier. So this has a little bit of, a little bit darker than the, than the paper right here. And then we've got down here, we've got this, there's these kind of two little 
reflections of the legs. So that comes up. And it's definitely fun to be able to render and do things like this. You know, it's just, to me, it's just kind of relaxing. It's not something I do all the time, but um, this just kind of ren rendering and making it look realistic. It, you know, there's something really satisfying about being able to do it. And this is a reflection of the handle in the side of the picture. And then there's this little shape, which I think is actually me taking the photograph <laughs> of, the, of the picture. I think it's interesting how that works. I think that's my reflection. And then let's see the handle. It's it's pretty dark. I'm gonna make sure it gets and it's got a it's got a it's got a little edge to it that's light, but for right now I'm just going to go ahead and get it all kind of one value just to start out. Then there's a, and I'm going to cover this up right now because I need to get over here. And there's a little detail on this guy and I'm going to leave the paper where I feel like there's that um, little highlight maybe it comes up a little bit more and again right now I'm just put, putting an overall value for this it has more nuance to it and more detail but for right now I'm just going to keep it simple so here's another question. Mm -hmm. um, do you know the erasers that look like a little pillow? Little pillow? Yes. Look, looking it up right now. Oh, I think I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen one in a long time. And you don't you don't use them? Mm-mm. But I, I have I know what you're talking about. They're soft, right? In, in addition to looking like a pillow, they're kind of are like a pillow. Is that right? Is that what is that is that what they're? Referring I think so. To? Yeah, the pink eraser. Uh, not the, not, the not a kneaded eraser. I think it's they're kind of um, soft. Okay, I think that's pretty good. It might be a little thick, but that's okay. And so I'm going to come down. There's a little cast shadow right here that the, the, there's this piece right under here that's kind of on the dark side, but right here there's a cast shadow. And then one thing I don't want to do is I, I don't want to put too much graphite down here because I want to get those neat, neat little highlights in. To me, this is just kind of kind of fun, fun stuff. Honestly, it reminds me of when I was a kid doing this stuff because I I was really into rendering things. Now I haven't blended yet. I am going to blend so that I can get that nice soft look which I think for this little picture, this little item is appropriate. 
there's some subjects that you know that's not that's not what you're after it's the so i think using the right kind of technique for the for your subject um you know that that can be really really creative and and fun to experiment with for sure Okay, so underneath here is a little cast shadow as well. So that's a, a, a nice little little detail. Okay, now I think I have the, the drawing off here a little bit on this, this part of the cast shadow, so I'm going to restate that because I'm want it to come out a little longer like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and get some value down for the cast shadow. And it's a little darker where where the little leg meets the table surface. Just slightly. And I don't want to get that cast shadow too dark. And that's another thing a, a, a photograph does is it usually gives us, uh, you know, makes the cast shadow too dark. And But you, we want that kind of reflected light to be bouncing into our shadows to give, to give them air. So, um, another question about the workshop. Mm -hmm. um, how young? So, what age youngster would Marla recommend this workshop for? Oh, you could be pretty young uh, <laughs> or old. Um, you know, I. It's probably not for, you know, a a a, a, a little 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 one because. It, just because of the the subjects that we you know paint might not be interesting to a really really young kid a real young child and also just the language that 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 I use to describe things but some someone that's you know um you know advanced for their age might might be interested in it I don't know. What do you think, Kevin? Like oh, it depends tw on the kid. 10, 12. It depends on the kid. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's for like a five-year-old. No. But, you know, because um, yeah, 12, maybe? Older, 12, 12 yeah. year old, maybe. But, uh, you know, really. Uh, it kind of depends on. As well, yeah. But the, yeah, I mean, the. I mean, it, it kind of. Yeah, it kind of depends. They're kind of universal, but yeah, I could see that it, it, we're not drawing like, you know, race cars and. Yeah, and yeah. You could. The thing about the workshop is that it really is, um, you know, my intent is to allow you to draw anything, anything, anything at all. You know, today we're just playing with this little little guy. Okay, so now comes the really fun part. We're going to start blending and then we're going to add that that white pencil to it, the highlights and get into some the more nuances of the values. So, all right. Thinking about I've got my little stump here. And I'm thinking about that ellipse. Did I do pretty good? I think I did okay on it. Now the thing about drawing uh, that I, I I hear people saying, "Oh well, I you know I'm not that good and can't draw a stick figure." You know all those kind of cliches. the The bottom line is, you know, no matter what, it's not going to be perfect, and. It's just not. There's there. It doesn't really exist out there a perfect drawing. So you know the, it, the good thing about that is well, good. You you can let go of that idea right 
<laughs> right away. It's not happening, so. I, you know, that's a good thing. That it's not going to be perfect. So now, see this construct, this is one of the, my construction lines. I'm getting rid of it. And so the, the final drawing does not, it doesn't show up on it. So that's why I think when people see a, a, a good drawing, they, they don't know that that was happening necessarily or a highly rendered drawing. There's all kinds of little nuances in here in this little, this little guy, how it goes down. So I'm um, just jumping back to clarify about the pillow eraser. Yeah. Um, I think those are called a professional dry cleaning pad, and it was used in drafting. Um, oh. You can still buy them. They're made by Alvin, the drafting company. Oh, they are? Uh, okay. Yeah. And, Interesting, um, huh? Yeah. It says... Um, Remove smudges, smears, and other imperfections from artwork, map board, and drawing boards. Interesting. Pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm They do look like pillows. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I don't I don't remember the last time I saw one of those though. It's been a while. So right now I'm just kind of getting everything that I've got down blended before I go back in and clean things up and, and, and add the dark darks and such. I'm just getting the, the blending kind of going. Now, the, the, maybe the, the good and bad of this this kind of rendering, and one of the reasons our uh, the workshop is is as long as it is because I show I, I don't we don't we don't skip around we we show you every 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 minute of the drawings. I think that's the case, isn't it, Kevin? We don't. Yeah. Yes, don't. there's there are long form videos. There's yeah. No, there's no sped up anything. No. Pam mentioned something. Pamela mentioned something. Another helpful tool is an erasing shield. An erasing shield. I do talk about erasing yeah, those shield. Are great. Yeah. Yeah, erasing shield's good. Good handy little, handy dandy little thing. And uh, you know, for even something like this, you could be using an erasing shield. Okay, this, this particular drawing will come together really nicely when I start adding the white. Um, and, you know, that's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to leave that kind of thing for the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks, that, it looks like magic. No, it's not. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get the this cast shadow blended a little bit. And probably in the this um this live stream today, I I probably won't get have time to really nuance out some of the edges and things but that's that's kind of things to play with do you, how soft or hard do you want the cast shadow to be so um could you touch on when to change pencil types during a drawing so um the you know the pencils range in hardness from usually 
usually a company goes from um, um, I don't know if there's seven H, but um, you know, like a five H to the middle would be uh, H B and an F, and then from um, from that ranging from um, a B to a nine B, and so the the softer ones are are darker, um, but they it's harder to get that super super fine line and detail with the with the softer ones so those different the different range is, is depending on the task at hand so right now i'm using a 4b right here i could in fact switch to uh, a, a a 6 a 6b if i got let's see if i've got it let me see what i've got this is a 9B, and this is, you know, that'll, that'll get me really, 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 really dark. Uh, right in there. And you can layer the, the, them over one another as well. So, but the hard ones, the really, really hard ones, um, will kind of create that kind of, I'm going to say, kind of slippery, almost waxy surface. So that's just something. So just like in pastel, you know, you want to kind of be aware of the hardness that you're, uh, you know, how just the kind of order of operations. I want this nice dark line here. It's just kind of fun to try to get it nice and precise. And just just that direct observation in, in a still life object is also to me like really, really satisfying because it's Just seeing those little nuances of value and little shifts in the shapes. This has got this has got this little lip. I haven't quite got it, but I think I can work on it to to get kind of goes down right here. And I need a I need a little harder pencil to get that that little shape right there. Keep also keeping your your pencils really sharp. That's something that um, was really driven home to me for me in art school. Like instructors would come by and you know like what are you doing there? <laughs> Why isn't your pencil sharp? Because it can be kind of a lazy thing not to have keep it sharp. Okay, I think we have a lot of good stuff going on here. I'm going to go ahead and add some of that white charcoal so we can kind of see what it looks like. And we're, we're just about at our time here. I can go over, but try to keep it. See, I'm just going to show you. I'm just, I have this little, little, bowl here that I put the shavings in just to keep them clean. But see that that gets it really nice. That is a nice sharp point. Now another method of sharpening is to do it by with a knife. Um, it takes a little practice but by doing that you're um, allowing you can reveal quite a bit more lead. Let um, me see if I've got one that's sharpened by hand. I might not in this stack, but um, that's another uh, great way of doing it. And uh, I, um, in art school, we sharpened all our pencils by hand with a knife. 
That was something we, we had to learn to do. But it takes a little practice. And I don't have you guys do that in the workshop because um, I don't want anybody getting hurt. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I just didn't want to didn't want to propose that. But that that is one thing. Now you see see how right there the graphite's uh, resisting that charcoal. So I'm going to erase right there with the kneaded eraser, and that's going to pull up just enough so that I can get that little highlight on there. And um, really quick, do you know the brand of the pencil sharpener you're using? I don't know the brand. Let's see. It, it says it on it, though. It says magnesium. It says K-U-M, made in Germany. Yep. yep. Those, are, those are good. Is that, somebody mentioned that earlier in the chat. A few people mentioned those. Yeah. Um, also, do you ever use I like these metal ones better than the the plastic ones with the with the um, little container, and I you know it makes it a little bit of a hassle to to deal with the the shavings, but um, I I think they're superior. Um, and also, do you ever use the sandpaper blocks? Yes, yes, I do. And would a white pastel pencil work for this? A white, um, I you know the thing about pastel is that it it, it sort of, um, I'm not sure it would work quite as much. It, it, the, I think that that the the charcoal is a tiny bit denser. Um, I don't know how the it, it might it might it might play okay with the. It might play okay. I'm going to change the shape down here a little bit. See, it just kind of comes alive with this, with the addition of the charcoal. I don't want to overdo the charcoal. I want to still let the paper be part of the value of what's going on. So I'm kind of sneaking up on this white. And I will go ahead and bl even blend the white in just a minute. And there's a little reflected light over here that's pretty. So I'm going to state that with a little stronger bit of the white. And there's a little, there's some highlights on this rim. So I'm going to clean up this pencil line graphite line and there's a little highlight pretty strong highlight right there and then and then there's this here which is really pretty So now, and just to clarify too, the General's charcoal white pencil, it's just sort of the brand name. It's not actually charcoal. It's um Yeah, it's not charcoal? No. What some, is it? Uh, I think it's graph some type of graphite or something. Is it? Yeah. Oh uh, that that could yeah, that's probably true. I wouldn't I'm sure that's it. true. You know. <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know if it's a if it's a nasty chemical or anything like that, but it's um yeah, it's hmm. not actually charcoal. Interesting. And why do they call it charcoal? 
Uh, that's the question <laughs> on the chat, but it's just one of those things. I don't know. We have to look it up. Yeah, we'll have to look it up. Maybe it just comes. It comes in their charcoal pencil set. So they just wanted to. Who knows? I'm sure they get questions about it all the time. It's pretty widely. Um, I think it's more chalk. We can look. We can. We can look it up, but um, more ch chalk than actually charcoal. Ch chalk hmm. based or something. But I, I don't think it's that important. But it is kind of one of those funny jumbo, yeah, it's, jumbo yeah, shrimp it's, type of things. Yeah, or, or, yeah. I don't know what they call those, but. Yeah, it's interesting. All right, so this is kind of starting to come together. It's, it is really interesting how the, the, the white just really kind of snaps, pops. Oh, Paula chimed in. She says it's calcium carbonate and binder. Oh, okay, great. Good to know. Thank you. Thanks, Paula. <laughs> yeah, and so, but it it doesn't. Um, you can't have a, a big buildup of um, the the graphite where you're going to put it. So it's um, really advisable to. Kind of leave the paper where where you know you're going to put the highlights. So let's see where do I want those. Even so, I'm having to see that kind of dig in a little bit. Definitely fun. It's lots of lots of little details in here. And I'm 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 kind of um, I would say that even though it's it looks kind of it looks pretty detailed, it's I'm also kind of doing a little shorthand for what's here. Now, if you really wanted to take your time and get every little um, every little bit, you could. This is kind of fun, the underside of that. Okay, let's get over to that handle. I want to get a little something here. And keep in the pencil this white, white calcium carbonate <laughs> binder. <laughs> it's interesting, really interesting. Maybe they call that a white charcoal pencil so people wouldn't get confused and then yeah. it had the absolute opposite effect. Yeah. People got even more confused. Yeah. Because if they called it a calcium carbonate or carbon whatever it is pencil then people would be confused. Yeah. It's... Whatever it is it works really well. Yeah it's neat. What? Tums. I says it, it's, it's. Is you know, it? It's Tums. We, we must. That's crazy. We should consult Google about this. Imagine if you did a drawing with Tums. That'd be pretty cool. So now I'm going to pull out a little. There's a little. Whoa. That's so funny.
So this will be We're definitely getting off track. Today. Yeah, we are. That's sorry. That's sorry about... <laughs> yeah. end of the year. You know, yeah, that's right. More. Yeah, it's challenging year. Definitely. So there's there's definitely some things that could 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 happen in this guy. Some more nuances in in this little this this the, the feet here. And uh, just to clarify uh, for Marsha and other, the uh, the drawing workshop is available now. Yes, it is. Uh, and the, the sale ends on the twenty third. The sale ends on the twenty third. Right. It's it's. It's on the website right now. You can go to the sales page, and it has tons of information about what's in it in, on the sales page. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, we're super proud of it. We, you know, as I said, really was in development for a couple years now and just hadn't quite, um, in fact, we we <laughs> in fact we did a whole workshop, and then I was like, nope, this isn't it. And we went back to the drawing board, no pun intended, and we did it again because I I just was like, nope, this isn't this isn't what I what I want. Um, so. And uh, maybe at the end of this drawing, we could uh, compare the original drawing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's things about um, this one that I like better. There's things about the other. And that's always the case. It always happens. Also, um, when I... When I I'm not when I'm not worried about blocking or any you know not worried about audience it's sort of a different thing but you know so now let's just clean it up a little bit here and there and this is when like something like the new erasing shield might come in handy when you're like wanting to get the those last kind of if you if you want it to be you know really refined you can come in and with an erasing shield or some other tools and get that a um, little bit more. Um... So uh, Anita says that this demo uh, sold me on getting the drawing workshop. Oh, cool. You, well, Mark. good. That's really cool. That's what we like to hear. And uh, just to clarify, too, this is... Um, the Strathmore, Strathmore Media Gray paper. This is um, this is tone gray sketch paper. Let me just show it again. This is it. Um, so it's not even, you know, a can on. Um, it's like cans on, like my tintas. Um, it's pretty close to that. Okay, let's take a look. All right. Here is my original one. Here's the one I did today. Let's see. It's, I think it's, yeah. The other thing that um, I like to do usually when I'm not um, on, on camera is I would have this a little bit of an angle for me to, to uh, be, I'm working flat today for the cameras. So that that's another difference for me, but yeah, I think it looks it looks pretty good. Yeah, I'd be like this a little bit, which you know we can get the cameras to do play nice with that too. But yeah, let's see a little bit noticing a little bit of a line here that was helpful on the other one. I still don't think I have it quite squat enough, but it's maybe a little better. Just a little, 
I was really being, you know, worried about being 100% faithful to the, to the object. But just like in a, in a painting, I'm really, it's everything that you do is somewhat of an abstraction of, of the, anything in the visual field. So it, um, not usually concerned with it being absolutely perfect. Okay, so that, that's, and, um, that's it. And just one last sort of clarifying yeah. question. So those stumps that you're using, yeah, um, you bought them at Dick Blick? I did. I bought them at Blick's, yeah. And, and they, come in, Blick. they come in different sizes. Are they, and they're Blick brand? Um, no, they're not. I think these are Jack Richardson. Jack Richardson. I believe. So they come in different sizes. You can also get these other ones. These are, these are soft. These are these tortillons. So the, these are called stumps or stomps, and these are tortillons. And um, I kind of um, like these better. Just that the soft. They have just a tactile and um, yeah, they they just feel better to me. And um, but you, you can you get sharpen in, those. They can be sharpened or no. Um. I like these. You you just unwind the paper so you can get them clean. So in in that sense, these are kind of interesting in in that way. Um, but they both work good, um, work well. The other thing that I use, and I used we used on the uh, the dog project, the Coop, Cooper the dog, is some. Um, cotton that's on a um, coil. And I like the cotton on the coil better because it's it, it just, to me, there's more surface area than just a small cotton ball. And we use that to make a dark background with shaved graphite for that project. So there's different techniques um, employed in each of the projects. So you kind of get an overview of how to do a lot of different things. So, yep, okay, I think that's it for today. Ooh, we went over, sorry about that, everyone. Um, but make sure you head to the website and check out the drawing workshop. There's a whole sales page, it talks all about it. The sale is until January 23rd, so you have 23 more days in the sale. And it is a really, uh, I think, a really excellent value for, for what you're getting. And um, for all you painters, pastelists out there, I think it's a you know it's a great if you if you ever felt like oh I can't paint that or I don't know how to do the drawing this should be a great a great asset for you. Okay, all right. Thanks thanks for everyone for joining today. Happy happy New Year. Happy painting. Um, I hope to see you next year. We'll have lots of good stuff for you. Um, lots of these uh, live stream demos and um, plenty of other lessons for you. Okay, see you soon.